Hey, welcome to episode number two of the Just Ask Kim Simple Tech Tips for Marketing podcast. I'll be your host to cover a variety of social marketing technology topics in this podcast. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at your business brand and evaluate whether it's possibly time for a visual brand refresh. We we'll take a look such at things such as taglines and whether yours is serving you at this time. And we'll also cover some social sites that may need to be adapted in graphics soon to ensure consistency due to site changes on those platforms available today. Now today's episode is being recorded on January 1st of 2012 and we're starting out the new year and if you are like other people you may have spent the last couple weeks kind of stewing over where your business is kind of looking at how things have progressed, maybe looking at your niche, maybe looking at your positioning, possibly looking just at where you are overall with your business. The end of the year can be a very powerful factor that can really cause us to be very introspective and to really do a lot of year-end review. And that's a very healthy process. It can be a very frustrating process, of course, but it's a very healthy process for taking a big picture look at your business. Now, assuming you've done that, we're going to move on forward from that and I'm going to assume that you've you reviewed where you've at where you're at and you've reviewed where you're wanting to go in this coming year and what you need to do now is to take a look at your website and take a look at the web properties that you have associated with your website such as your Facebook page and decide whether they are all still a hundred percent consistent with where your brand is, where your niche is, and whether they present the right tone, the right quality of visual branding, and really, really have your niche very, very nailed down. And so one of the places that the best point to start at with that is by going to your website. And here on your website, you'll want to take a look at whether your graphics are the quality you want them to be whether your picture is branding you strongly, whether it, it carries the right emotions and whether it's really a good picture that really conveys what you want it to. And whether the the topic headline, whether the, the primary headline on the site really conveys what it should. Now one other that you want to pay some attention to is the little subheadline that's often with your title. Now depending on how the title of your site is structured, you may or may not have a subject, a little little secondary headline line otherwise known as a tagline. If your blog title conveys everything that it, it can then you may not need a tagline but in many cases sites are using a tagline today to really convey a little more about what it is that they do in a little short blurb and so we're going to take a look at that because that can help you hit a particular target that a lot of people don't even know they need to be hitting. And what I mean by that is that when traffic hits your site and when a new person that's never seen you before comes to the front page of your website or comes to an internal page in your site, you want them to be able to know within 10 seconds what your site is about. 10 seconds, you might be saying. Oh, geez, you know, isn't that what our about page is for? Isn't that what all the about documents and all the additional stuff about us is for? Well, it is, but those are for extended stuff. Those are for when people are ready to learn a little more. People visit websites the same way that people channel surf. That is to say that when somebody's sitting down with a remote control and they're clicking on the button, they're clicking and they're clicking until they find something that's approximately right that catches their eye. And it isn't going to be just your graphics that are going to catch somebody's eye. It is things like the tagline and things like primary subject lines and primary post titles that are really going to have to grab someone in the first 10 seconds to get someone to stick and to stay on your page. They really need this information immediately in order to quickly know that they're on the right channel and that now they need to look into the site a little further, that it may be the channel they're looking for. Now for me personally, I tend to evaluate where my brand is in terms of about an every six month overall evaluation. I look at my metrics on a 90 day scope, but at least every other, I tend to look at where I'm at in terms of niche performance. Now sometimes this is because how I'm presenting my niche to the community and how I'm presenting my niche to the readers needs to be adjusted to make sure that it's really representing what I do. 
At other times, I need to look at this because perhaps I'm straying a little off course. Perhaps I'm, I'm moving a direction and I need to really come back to focus and I need to be sure that I'm check reined in to really focusing on my niche. And this can go both directions. You don't want to be too strict in either way because what you'll find is that sometimes over time you will naturally shift your niche and that's a good thing and that that is really working for you and that is you growing as a marketer and you expanding in that direction and you discovering what fits you better. And when you discover at an evaluation point that that's what's happened, you need to adjust your branding to be sure that it represents what you represent now. Now, the opposite of that, of course, is when you've strayed off track and your niche branding is correct, but you've strayed off. So that's when you need to check rein your content and bring your content back into alignment. Now, like I said, I tend to look at this on about an every six month picture. And for me personally this year, I will be adapting my branding. And you've seen that with this podcast in particular with the simple tech tips for marketing. And that's really more the direction I'll be going with my tagline and things like that. I'm still adapting around that concept, moving away from my current tagline because it isn't really fitting with what I represent out here in the market. It's not that it isn't what I do, but it is not painting the, the clear enough picture. Something you want to be careful with with taglines is not to get too fluffy. You want to be sure that they really represent what somebody at their gut level is looking for. And generally, if something is a little too fluffy or a little too foo-foo, you're not really going to get there. You want to be really straight shooting. You want to be really to the point, And you want to be something that just grabs somebody instantly and is very clear. There's no need to beat around the bush about what your marketing is and what your brand represents and what you can do for people. So keep that tagline real consistent and really spend some time on it because it can be one of the make or break factors that really go into whether somebody recognizes that your site is where they want to be within those first 10 seconds. Now the next part of looking at the site is really to make sure whether that same brand carries through throughout the site. And by that I mean that the entire above the fold view, that is everything that shows in the browser when they first land without scrolling, represents your branding. But you may have a front page of your blog that is different in terms of how much shows or what shows than when they're on a particular post. So be sure also that this branding is accurate and strong on the particular post. And that can be a number of factors, including widgets. That can be additional things in your sidebar. It can be what's in the navigation bar. It can be do you have a different navigation bar in different categories and things. Make sure everything really at every point portrays the brand as strong as possible and as best as possible so that people realize where they've landed, even if they don't land on the home page. And that will help you have the best brand cohesion overall. And that will grab people's attention. They'll have caught the attention by the site. They'll have stopped and read the post. If the post struck them, they're generally going to look at something like a footer author box, an author box on the post that tells them just a little blurb more about you. And again, if that strikes them and they want to learn a little more about the site, that's generally when people move to that all important about page. And your about page will often be one of the most trafficked pages on your blog. So you want to be sure that you pay it a lot of due diligence and a lot of attention. Really be sure that you answer the question that's in them of what's in it for the, them as a reader. That the about page is not just bragging on yourself, bragging on your credentials, although those things may be important relative to your niche, but that you are conveying what is important about the site and why they will want to become a subscriber and a reader. Also choose to make a call to action to opt in or subscribe there, depending on how you're structuring your site. Today's product feature is AWeber. AWeber is the leading email marketing software and marketing service available for you to assist you in your online endeavors, whether you have an online-based entirely or an offline-based business. 
when you're communicating with your customers and creating a back-end follow-up, you're going to want to utilize a strong provider of newsletter services, uh, both from an autoresponder side, enabling you to do consistent follow-up relative to the length of time they've been a subscriber with you, as well as sending out new newsletters and new current information to this community, as well as enabling you to extend your brand directly into somebody's mailbox. Now today we've been talking about visual branding and we've been talking about the power of really making sure that your brand carries all the way through your marketing. And Aweber gives you a vast collection of tools in order to do this. Everything from a built-in pop-up tool to a built-in Facebook opt-in to built-in list services to the ability to do even the HTML-based really pretty newsletters that a lot of individuals really like. It even comes with time-tested and proven templates. Now there's not the need to have to contract out having to have a web template custom made from you. You can take a, one of their stock templates which have been well tested and do a little conversion just to add your own graphics in and you're set to go with a template that you know is going to perform well in a variety of browsers. Aweber is the leader in the industry particularly in terms of internet marketing deliverability. Not all companies are really open to companies that are participating in internet marketing and affiliate marketing and you'll find that in fact we can be a little little unwelcome under certain providers. And what you want is a company that not only welcome us with open arms, but also has really strong deliverability. And deliverability is the token of success out here and relates to the percentage of messages that are sent from their server that end up in the inbox rather than the spam folder. Aweber is going to create a real strong deliverability that's going to help get your messages into the inbox rather than into the spam folder of the people that receive it. And that is the big difference between them and other second-rate providers. You're really going to like the tools that Aweber provides, and if you haven't had a chance to check them out, be sure that you do. Just ask Kim.com slash Aweber will take you to the page where you can sign up for a $1 trial for 30 days. Go in there and kick the tires, look around, and I know you're absolutely going to love Aweber, so be sure to check them out. Now from there we move on to looking at graphics, and graphics are becoming a more and more key element as we move forward. This is not only true from the reader standpoint, but this is also now true from an SEO standpoint. In terms of the most recent Panda updates, Google is now paying very strong attention to sites that are well branded, sites that that carry a very professional look, and sites that have the look and feel of professional quality, both content and reader experience. And if you want to take that into evaluation, consider if you would go into town and you would buy a magazine for a mag for any major magazine. And you'd be reading something in there and they'd say, check out, you know, additional articles by this whatever on our website and you'd bounce out to their website before the page would load you would have some expectations of what a professional well financed well maintained website is going to look like you're going to have some expectations when you land on that page of the quality that it's going to portray instantly within that 10 seconds you're instantly going to know that you're on a high quality site now flip over, does your site portray the same aspects? Not necessarily the same layout as a magazine site, or not necessarily the same layout as whatever niche you know you were thinking about the magazine in, but do you have the same professional feel? Is the same brand there? Is the same attention to detail? Is the same, you know, the little elements that make something look professional, are they there? These increase the reader experience, improve the reader experience and increase the time on site. These improve how long somebody's going to stay on your site and stay reading and really the trust aspect. And those trust aspects are elements that go into the new Panda scoring. I know that's a little strange to try to explain, but these days 
Google is really favoring sites that feel trustworthy. And if you're in attraction marketing, that's something you want to try to be doing anyway. So that's exactly in alignment with where you're going and something that you really should be paying attention to. Now, up till very recently, though, it was pretty easy to skirt around that and not as much focus for SEO was coming on that. Now it really has. This has the advantage, though, of very much favoring the sites that pay attention to this. And this not only improves SEO, but because it improves reader experience, it's definitely something that's worth your time and attention to look into. Look into high quality themes, look into strong graphical branding art, look into having a designer developer do some customization for you so that your site is very unique, very professional, and that your artwork stands out and that you know you do not look like a carbon copy of everyone else out here. You don't want to be forgettable. You want to have some distinguishing factors you want to have your site just a little different than the rest so that you stick in somebody's mind. Majority of your visitors are going to be visual learners. They're going to be people who their key modality for taking in the world is going to be visual. Now that's not to say that you won't have people that are auditory and kinesthetic, but a lot of sight readers, and again, particularly coming back to reading, here's the visual element. These are individuals that the, their preferred experience in the world is from a visual standpoint. And if you are not meeting their need in terms of visual elements and their need in terms of a visual hunger, a well-branded site, nice graphics, um, easy font to read, none of that gray on black stuff, you know, you want to have a, or excuse me, none of that gray on white stuff, none of that little bitty print, none of that walls of text. You want things as easy to read as possible. You know, when you meet all those elements, then you make their experience on your site much easier and you make it easier for them to consume your content. And there's less friction, there's less resistance, and there's less challenge for them to intake your content and spend time with you and get to know you. You don't have these elements that are off-putting to them. So really pay attention to your site branding overall. And once you've got that figured out, once you've figured out what you're doing with your home base, and that is your website or your blog, then you want to pay attention to making sure that your social media sites have corresponding related graphically similar branding. And by that, most people take header graphics, take opt-in graphics, things like that, and just lightly modify them to fit the constraints of the other social sites. For example, Twitter backgrounds, YouTube backgrounds, Facebook. Well, on Facebook, we now have the timeline covers, we have the sidebar banners on pages, and we have the Facebook custom landing tab opt-in forms, and generally a small header graphic there. And by making all this congruent, and by making all the artwork tie together, people get this sense of unity, this sense of professionalism. When you go to Coca-Cola's website, Coca-Cola is very distinctive white and red there. They their branding is consistent when you go over to their Facebook page. Even if you're on one of their fa custom Facebook applications, you'll notice that all the branding art very much uses even the same fonts, the same stylization, the same impact and feel. And you always feel as if you're still with the same the same flow and company that it was all designed at once. And that's actually really true. It may not have been designed at the same time, but it definitely was all designed taking each of each element into consideration and that's what you want to do here now being the start of the year having reevaluated where your business is this is a great time to look at your branding art and to be sure that you're where you want to be it also happens to be an unusually great time in social media to be doing this because several of the major platforms have just made changes to their requirements and to the available space and even if you don't want to change what your branding art represents, you probably need to recalibrate these sites. And by that I mean that the new Twitter.com, or the, it's Twitter.com, but they're calling it new Twitter. That has had some formatting changes and many people need to adjust the size of their backgrounds there. YouTube has had a layout change and anybody that's a channel partner needs to adapt their backgrounds there. Facebook, while pages didn't get adapted, profiles did, and we're needing to set up the timeline covers in order to present our brands there. 
with the with three major pieces of our visual branding on the table it really is time to look at redoing all of these at once it's time to look at having a unified experience and to get everything done preferably by one artist who's skilled enough to do them all so that they all carry the same impact they all carry the same appearance and styling and things like that so that you really have this consistent consistent visual brand all the way across the board now one little tech tip I'll give you is perhaps you know whenever you're working with a web designer or you know you're working with somebody that's doing your art for you one thing you may not know that you need is a file called a PSD file and that's a Photoshop design file and oftentimes when we get our visual branding and our graphics back from a designer we get the the PNG or the JPEG or the you know those files back and those are the flats those are the ones we're going to use but without the PSD file we're not able to replicate the graphics and we would be forced to go back either to the exact same designer later or to try to recreate it all from scratch and have to do a lot of guesswork. When you can get that PSD file, and you don't really need to know what it's about or what it means or even what it does, but you do need to make sure that you get it. So sometimes you with your graphic designers, depending on who you're dealing with, you may have to pay a little more, but I'm going to tell you that generally speaking, it's not a whole lot more, and it's going to save you a lot of time and headache overall as your brand grows. Having access to that PSD file is a really big piece of insurance for you in terms of being in control of your brand and not being tied to one designer later should anything ever go south or should just the designer you know kind of vanish out here as some of these do tend to do you always want to be in control of your brand management and having that file can mean a lot to you down the road it can save you a lot of money down the road so when you're ordering these graphic packages be sure that you're getting your PSD files because they're really going to help you out going forward all right we've taken a look today at a number of things. We've taken a look at your taglines and we've taken a look at your visual branding and we've taken a look at really the site flow and structure in terms of presenting that visual branding and at some of the social sites. Now if you haven't had a chance to actually evaluate where your niche is and whether it represents where you want to be today, today is and today and this week and the next couple of weeks is definitely the time to really focus on that, to be sure that your site is where you want it to be and that it's representing you in the truest form of your brand and that your brand is representing you in the truest form of what you offer to the market and where your passions lie and what you bring to your reader. That is something that understanding that piece that underlies your brand as a whole is really very, very critical. And you want to make sure that that is right before you focus on these graphical elements and before you focus on the branding elements. Like a house, when you get the bones of the house right, the house itself can be redecorated, it can be remodeled, you can take the siding on and off, but as long as the bones of the house are right, the brand is going to be strong overall and over time, regardless of what color you paint it. And that's something that you want to be sure that your brand has. So be sure that you pay attention to that, that you be sure that your niche is really spot on, and that people are able to instantly identify what your site is about and what your brand represents within that first 10 seconds. That is definitely the key to getting readers to not just thumb through your site but to stick around and maybe even to read more more than one post or maybe even to to decide that that's a site they need to subscribe to because it answers to the need of things they're looking for pay attention that it's a strong focus as well and that you know it really portrays what you offer rather than speaking in more of fluff terms and sound bites we don't necessarily want to be out here with the stereotypical sound bites because they sound like everyone else. You want to be real strong and clear about what you present, no need to fluff it up. Just be real clear about who and what you are and what you represent in the market. And that's going to help you draw people to you that need what you offer because that's what you're looking for. You're looking for people who need what you offer and you're looking for people looking for you. And when you get really clear about your branding, when you get really clear about how you present it, and when you get really clear about making sure that the people can instantly identify that it's going to be so much easier for those people to not only find you but to know that they found you and that's really key all right I hope that this overview of visual branding helps you get a better idea 
of ways that you can encompass it in your brand and helps you evaluate your site in terms of whether you're really getting the performance that you want out of your site and maybe perhaps if things like taglines or even even categories or other elements that are instantly displayed on your site when somebody lands there to be sure that they are painting the right picture for the visitor so that you're going to help the visitor know that they've landed where they need to be. All right, I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Just Ask Kim Simple Tech Topics for Marketing podcast. If you enjoyed this, I hope that you'll join me over at justaskkim.com slash subscribe and subscribe to my newsletter to help you stay up to date on all the latest topics in social marketing and internet marketing today, and as well as join me on the major social platforms such as facebook.com you'll find me at facebook.com slash ask kim or on twitter at twitter.com slash ask kim and i look forward to connecting with you there all right you take care and i will catch you in the next episode